I'm just going to go ahead and spline this out as I would spline it. Uh, first things first, I'm going to select everything that I have. You know, I'm going to see my keys. They're nice and clean, right? I, I keyed on every two, which again might be a, a tad excessive. Um, keying every three to four or five even should be fine at this stage. Uh, but then, you know, you'd have to put in those extra keys ahead of time. I just went ahead and keyed every two because I wanted to have the most accurate result at the end. Um, and there's still going to be cleanup. No matter how you do it, there's still going to be cleanup involved. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these. I'm going to head over to tangents and I'm going to hit auto. So that's going to set all of these tangents to auto. And then we just want to be sure that we're working in auto tangents here because it's still technically set to stepped. Uh, but once we have that, we're in spline now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the audio just for a little bit because we don't need it right now. So now if I press this, it's splined. It's pretty floaty. Um, you know, it needs to just be tightened up, sharpened up, and cleaned up generally. How I would start is I go to my biggest controllers, in this case, the body, right? Um, this is where I have all my translates. That's going to be what I want to start on. Um, then this, I just have my rotate X and my rotate Z. Um, everything else should be muted or just no values on it whatsoever. I'm going to start with these two. And really what I like doing is I like picking like a nice section just to make it more digestible. If you're looking at your whole shot, right, and you have like 400, 500 frames, I don't want to go through the whole shot and spline out one controller and then go back to the beginning. I personally like to do like a section and then like work my way through that section, splining out all my stuff, making sure it's working, and then kind of like switch over my timeline to the next section and work it that way. Uh, so just to give you an idea, I don't know, I'm going to say uh, 40 frame, 30 frames or so sounds about right. You know, maybe we half this. Um, I might even just consider like what's happening in the shot, like what is actually what the character is doing. If it feels like they're doing the same thing for like a chunk of time and then all of a sudden they switch to something else, I might just do everything before that big change uh, just to make it easier in myself to be like, okay, Right now, I'm focusing on this. I'm not going to be worried about everything else. I'm just going to do this right now. So this this seems fine, about, about 40 frames. Um, I'm going to grab my body. I'm going to pull up my graph editor. And basically, the main thing here is that I am looking for clean curves. I am looking for curves that aren't just like doing like this, right? They are doing nice whooshing motions because that whoosh implies that the character is either holding but still slightly moving and then doing a quick motion and then holding that motion and easing into it or easing out of it. So right here in my X, I have, you know, this isn't a terrible shape. We have exactly that. We have the, the curve coming up and then it plateaus at the top and wants to kind of stay still and then it wants to come back down. This is a terrible curve. Um, I think we can clean it up uh, uh just to see just to tighten everything up to see what we can do to make it feel a bit more sharp um so i would start like that i'd get my major body controller and just work my way down ty t or tx ty tz and then my rotate y so let's just do it um there are tools out there that um can simplify these curves automatically for you. Anambot has them. Um, there's other tools out there. I personally don't use a whole lot of that ease of life stuff. I like to be much more involved in what I'm doing, make conscious decisions about it. Uh, so let's think about it. So right now, so I'm just gonna do it by hand is what I mean. Um, he is somewhat taking a step and then stepping to the right and stopping. So I'm thinking that we can delay this TX just a touch. I'm just going to grab this one, push it down, and I'm just going to kill these two. Remember, we want, we want these curves to be clean as possible, the least amount of keys that we need to get the effect that we're looking for. So he's going to kind of delay for a bit as he's moving forward, and then he's going to come forward to about here, I would say. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And maybe I want him to just overshoot a little bit 
Maybe I just want that to overshoot a bit. So I'm just going to go in here somewhere. I don't know, maybe these two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab these and kind of make like a bigger curve. You'll notice that when you delete keys, it'll change the shape of your curve, obviously, right? Um, I'm looking for just like a nice clean shape. If I delete these, you know, it's still fairly clean and you're probably not even going to notice this, but the, the shape isn't as clean as this, I would argue. Because see here how we have like a nice curve that comes up. If I delete these two keys, we're kind of getting into like a quick jagged territory here, just a little bit. And this is just stuff I want you guys to keep an eye out for. Um, so I might come out, overshoot it a little bit over here, hold that for a second, and then kind of have him return about here. So I might bring this up, kill this curve here. Um, maybe I'll extend my timeline a little bit just to incorporate some of that um, movement back there. So let's see if I like that. Um, I don't like this. In fact, I'm going to just like, I want to do something where I kind of want to hold him in place for a little bit before he starts moving. And then all this, honestly, I'm just going to kill that and see how that feels. And you know, as you're doing this, you're like, all right, well, maybe this isn't the cleanest curve. Maybe this isn't doing anything. Maybe this isn't doing what I want it to do. Just try it. I'll try just getting rid of that. Let's see how that looks. That looks exactly the same to me. I cannot even see the difference in that. Um, you know, even if in my mind I was like, oh, it'd be nice if he was like moving just a little bit, but then he like held that for like a few frames and then he moved again. I can't see it. It doesn't read, right? If it doesn't read, get rid of it. It's not doing you any service. It's just complicating your curves. So, you know, already you can see that here's here's my my overly simplified curve. I can even go further here. I don't know. Do I need that? Eh, maybe we need that, right? Do I need these? Do I need any of these three? I'd say this a very similar shape, but you know, I'm gonna try it out. Right, that kind of feels very similar to me, if not identical. So the point I'm trying to make is simplify the curve and do stuff in there to make it as easy for you to know what's happening as possible. Right now in this motion, he is just going from left to right and he's going to hold that weight on this leg for a second and then he's going to move back to screen left, right, as he's, as he's doing this.